is Dr. James Marion once again for our third Thursday Facebook Live broadcast from the Susan and Leonard Feinstein Inflammatory Bowel Disease Center here at Mount Sinai Medical Center in New York City. For those of you who are regular viewers of our Facebook Live broadcast, uh, we are uh, at the epicenter of the COVID-19 pandemic here in the United States. I'm very pleased to announce uh, that, and confirm what you probably have heard in the news, that the pandemic, while it's still going on, appears to have um, eased. And our hospital which system, which had had uh, over 2,200 patients, is now starting to dip below 400 patients. And I can tell you that there are nobody's more relieved than I am, and Dr. Greenwald, both of us have been on the front lines for the last 10 weeks, and it's a real relief to be back to doing what we were trained to do, which is to be gastroenterologists. It's my pleasure to introduce Dr. David Greenwald, who is our Director of Clinical Gastroenterology and Endoscopy here at Mount Sinai Medical Center. Now, Dave uh, has been on our program before, and I will have to remind everybody that Dave was my resident when I was an internal medicine resident up at Columbia Presbyterian. So you can message him if you want to get any other stories about my past. Uh, we've known each other for many, many, many years. And in fact, we met Dave, I would like to remind everybody, at the last pandemic uh, that mm -hmm. really raged through our hospital system here in New York, which was the beginning of the AIDS pandemic. So Dave Greenwald, it is a pleasure to have you here. Thank you, Jim. It's nice to be here. And I'm happy to tell any of those stories to anybody who's really interested, Jim. <laughs> Hopefully censored as much as possible. So Whenever Dave, yeah. um, I think the real topic now is, is Mount Sinai, GI, IBD, and endoscopy outpatient open for business? <laughs> Jim, it's a great question. Um, and it's been a very difficult last few weeks for sure, for many reasons. You know, Mount Sinai Gastroenterology has been open all the way through the pandemic for um, patients who needed us. And that's a very important point. So we've been able to do endoscopy throughout the pandemic for patients who had very significant problems that needed immediate attention, things like blockages in the intestine or bleeding, for example. We, of course, found ways to do that safely and take care of those patients. So we've been doing it all along. In the outpatient world, we converted all of our appointments almost immediately to telehealth visits, um, which have become very, very popular. They're quite easy to do. And so anybody who's had acute problems along the way, we've been taking care of regularly and we continue to take care of. What we're doing now is expanding our operations so that we are um, in a very safe but limited and sort of slowly moving forward way, um, increasing our outpatient visits so that um, the outpatient facilities for patient care will be opening over the next week or so in the IBD center. And, um, and then endoscopy, we have gradually started to increase some procedures for outpatients who had previously been deferred. So, you know, we're reading a lot of stuff about states opening up and New York having certain rules and certain parts of the state opening up. So I, I understand it's sort of different for different places and different regions. What are some of the precautions that are being taken, Dave, to ensure the safety of our patients and staff? Yeah, so it's a great question, Jim, and it's one that's top of mind for everyone. So the safety of our patients is paramount. I mean, that comes first in every situation here. A lot of people are talking about the new normal, and what hasn't really changed here at Mount Sinai is a commitment to the safety of both our patients and our staff. Um, at the same time, what ha also hasn't changed is the need for patients' ongoing health care. So, you know, your healthcare is very important to all of us, whether it's a routine checkup or a screening, um, or you have a symptom that needs to be evaluated, all of that is very, very important. So here's a number of things that are happening, Jim, um, in terms of precautions. Before any appointment, whether it be an endoscopy or an outpatient visit, patient symptoms are being screened. Things that you've read about probably in the, in the media, but things like, you know, do you have a temperature over 100.4? Do 
Do you have a cough? Do you have a fever? Do you have any new symptoms that would make us concerned? And if you have symptoms that are concerning for COVID-19, you're going to be um, referred in a different manner to um, a, a physician or a healthcare provider who can evaluate you for COVID-19. Short of that, however, when you come in before your appointment, um, you're also gonna uh, have a, a series of things done online to try to minimize the amount of time that you spend in the, um, during the visit. During the actual visit, when you come into the facility, again, you'll be screened for those same symptoms. Temperature checks are being done on arrival. Um, and again, if you have a fever, you will be turned away at that point or taken care of in a different way. Um, we're minimizing contact in all of our facilities by moving furniture apart, maintaining physical distancing, minimizing the number of patients in waiting areas, monitoring how many people are in elevators and limiting the number of people in elevators, for example. And we're encouraging um, uh, everybody to take the precautions that are being advised. Everybody is being masked within the facility and that's a very important part of the process that's going on right now. Behind the scenes, there's a whole lot of cleaning that's going on, um, wiping down of surfaces. We're concerned about buttons and um, touch, high touch surfaces is sort of the lingo. And we're, we're doing all of that on a continuous basis. The staff is being screened. We're asking staff to take their temperatures twice a day and they are being tested for exposure to COVID-like illness. And again, um, the, I, I alluded to this before, but anybody who actually has COVID-19 or is under investigation because of symptoms are being separated out and treated in separate facilities. So that's quite a lot, Jim. Yeah, no, it's very, you know, it's intriguing too, because listen, when we started with this back in late March, Seems like and forever. the tide started to rise, uh, there were a lot of things that I think the patients may not recognize about the hospital. Like the, there are lots of markers on the ground telling you where to stand to be six feet from somebody else. When you go on an elevator, it's not going to be packed. They're limiting the number of people on elevators. Everybody will have a mask on. Uh, it is required. Uh, they can't get past security without them. So the precautions um, now feel quite natural to those of us who have never left. But when patients arrive here, visitors arrive here, uh, they'll notice that the hospital has changed in many subtle and not so subtle ways. Which brings me to the, the question of visitors, Dave. You know, we do procedures and the like, and patients often like to bring their families with them to visits. What is the current policy for having visitors, let's say in the endoscopy unit? Yeah, so you know, the most up-to-date information on this is found at the, at the website. Um, so mountsinai.org, where you can get that information because this has been a moving target over the past couple of weeks as the situation has dictated. In right. general, we're limiting the number of visitors. We'd like to have as few people in the facility as possible. So in general, for patients, for example, coming for an office visit, we'd like them to come alone. If they absolutely need um, an escort or somebody for whatever reason, individual um, individual arrangements can be made with the manager of that facility. For endoscopy, most patients, once they are completed their procedure, they are escorted by our staff down to a, a front desk area where they are you know, reunited with their escorts and so forth. So we're sharply limiting visitors. And that, that's an important part of this physical distancing that we've been talking about. Yeah, and the other thing I know we're doing here in the IBD Center, the waiting room has been completely reconfigured. There are no seats next to one another. Uh, within six feet, um, and social distancing will be much, much easier uh, yes. given the way it's been set up. The choreography of a visit now is going to minimize exposure to other patients and staff. And as you said, any patient under investigation for COVID is entirely segregated from the non-COVID population. And, and I would like to reiterate what you had said, Dave. We have been doing endoscopies, giving infusions, Chemotherapy has been given, and infliximab has been given, medications have been given, patients have been treated all through this and safely and effectively. So we're still, we're still able to give quality care, but now we're really trying to open this back up again and reassure our patients. So elective endoscopic procedures, what are the ones that are being done now, Dave? Cancer prevention, uh, polypectomies, anything else that uh, is being done now that patients should contact their doctors about? Yeah, so we set up a very organized system of evaluating 
um, patients by what we call the tier. So we created a tier structure, T-I-E-R, of, um, of each patient who was deferred, where their procedure was deferred, and what the indication for the procedure was, so that we were able to um, try to evaluate as we start to resume endoscopy, sort of where we are with those patients. So we have um, started to bring back patients who have acute symptoms like bleeding that we discussed before or an intestinal obstruction. We are now working our way through people who have symptomatic disease. So there are problems where the diagnosis that they might get via endoscopy would change a therapy. So for example, a patient is suspected to have a malignancy where if they had that malignancy, a treatment would be given based on that diagnosis. We are bringing those people back in. The last people who will come in are people who are having routine screening, colorectal cancer screening colonoscopies. We, we see some patients who have endoscopy um, prior to elective procedures like bariatric surgery and so forth. Those will be the last people to come back in. But we are starting now to increase the availability of um, patients who, who need selected procedures. All those patients, I must say, are being screened for COVID-19 before the procedure. And our elective procedures are only being done on patients who are COVID-19 nasal swab negative. Excellent. Well, listen, Dave, I, you know, I don't see you much anymore. We don't see much of anybody anymore. I want to thank you for the leadership and the steadfastness that you brought to this rather unexpected interruption in our clinical lives and the lives of our patients. Uh, I noticed it. I felt it when I was on the inpatient unit. Uh, I felt like uh, you were really, you really took charge in an inspiring way. So I want to thank you on behalf of myself and all of the other faculty here at the IBD Center and all of our patients who rely on the endoscopic services and clinical services here. So thank you. Thank you, Jim. Gives me a moment, though, just to thank all of the heroes out there. There are a zillion of them all throughout society and all throughout the health system. And what we've recognized is everybody's willingness to chip in, do their part, and really participate in getting us through this pandemic. So those are my heroes. Yes. So here we go. Let's start to take these tentative steps toward our soft opening or reopening. Uh, and a uh, lot of information here, but um, if you have any questions about where you fall on this tiered system that Dr. Greenwald just outlined, uh, please contact your gastroenterologist here at Mount Sinai. There will be links available uh, on this uh, post and the Facebook Live post for you to reach out to Mount Sinai. If you have any further questions, uh, we're here to answer them and help you navigate through what I hope will be a long lasting post COVID era. Thank you again, David. Uh, this is Dr. James Marion uh, for the third Thursday live from the IBD Center at Mount Sinai Medical Center once again. And I look forward to seeing you again next month. Good afternoon.